I want to talk about agency theory or the agency problem. Now, what is it? Well, first we have to talk about the agency relationship. And this is a case where a principal hires an agent to represent its interests. And you can think about this in terms of agents that represent celebrities or athletes. They hire these, these celebrities or athletes, hire agents in order to negotiate contracts, um, to find commercial opportunities, other kinds of uh, opportunities to make money. Okay, Other types of principal agent problems, maybe less obvious to you, uh, a homeowner who's the principal hires a broker who's the agent to sell the house for them. A car owner, okay, also the principal, hires a mechanic as their agent to repair the car for them. Stockholders or owners of a company okay, are the principals. What do they do? They hire managers or agents to run the company for them. Now, what's the problem with that? Most of us have hired a mechanic to do our car repair work. All right, People do sell houses on their own, but many people use a real estate broker to help them sell their house. And many corporations, okay, most corporations hire managers. It's very rare that the that the person who owns the entire company runs it themselves. Okay, it may be the case that in a small business you run it yourself, but oftentimes people who own their own business still hire someone to work for them to run the business, especially if you have several locations. What's the problem? The problem is there's a conflict of interest between the principal and the agent. For example, a real estate broker may not have the same incentive to search for the highest selling price. A mechanic may not have the goal of keeping repair costs down. And managers may not care about maximizing shareholder wealth. And I'm not talking about dishonest managers, dishonest mechanics, or dishonest real estate brokers. I'm just talking about people who are going to behave in their own best interest. Why do these problems occur? They occur because of asymmetric information and monitoring costs. Asymmetric information is the case where one party, in this case the agent, happens to have more information than the other party, in this case the principal. And it's very costly to monitor what the agent is doing. All right. Oftentimes, the reason you hire an agent is because they have expertise in an area. Could you gain that expertise on your own? Well, sure you could, but that's, it's not free to do that. It takes time to gain that expertise, to do that research in order to understand um, the situation or the, um, whatever it is you're doing, whether it's the real estate market or auto repair or running a business. For example, Real estate brokers have better a better understanding of the demand for houses. So they have an idea of what your house should sell for. Okay, um, But they may wish to sell the house rather than wait for a better offer. Now, if you know anything about selling your house through a, through a real estate agent, they do get a commission. They do get a percentage of the sale price. But most of the gain goes to the homeowner. For example... Suppose waiting an extra month would allow the broker to find a, a buyer who's willing to pay $10,000 more for your house. Well, that sounds pretty good. Okay, that's good for you, but how much does the broker get? Well, the broker gets, generally speaking, oftentimes you hear about 6% is the commission you pay the real estate firm. So they get about $600 for a $10,000 for selling the house for $10,000 more and usually the breakdown is the owner of the real estate firm gets 3% and the broker who actually does the sales transaction gets 3%. So now when you break it down that broker who's selling your house gets another $300. On the other hand the homeowner gets another $9,400 after commission. So as a homeowner, you'd like to wait the extra month and get a little bit more money, but for the broker to wait an extra month and do more work for an extra $300 may not be worth it to them. In the case of a mechanic, the mechanic understands the car, also understands the possible repair options. 
and they may have an incentive to perform a more costly repair job when a less costly option would be sufficient. For example, in the case of brakes, uh, sometimes you can replace the rotors. Those are the things that sort of spin around on your on your wheel and the brake pad rubs up against them to stop your car. Um, but if they're warped, oftentimes they can resurface them. They can put them on a machine and it'll smooth it out. That's probably a less expensive option. Now there's nothing wrong with replacing the rotors, but it would be less costly to, to resurface them. The mechanic may choose to replace them because it's more lucrative for the business. Okay? It's not that it's wrong to, to replace them, but it's more cost effective for you to simply have them resurfaced, especially if it's an older car that you're not going to hold on for a long time. Managers also have different incentives from the people they work for. For example, if you own a business, that is you're a shareholder in a co corporation, your goal is to see the value of your holdings, to see your wealth increase. Managers don't always have those same incentives. Managers oftentimes have incentives to increase their perks. You perhaps have read that there are many managers that have many CEOs that have access to a corporate jet. They usually fly first class. Oftentimes they stay in luxury hotels. None of these things necessarily add value to the shareholder. They may have country club memberships. Okay, again, these don't necessarily benefit the shareholder, but they certainly benefit the manager. And the manager may try and spend some of shareholders' money doing these things for themselves. Some of the solutions to the agency problem. Uh, for real estate brokers and mechanics, rating sites like Yelp and Angie's List uh, can provide incentives for them to provide good service. Okay? A good rating can be good for your future business. Likewise, a poor rating can hurt you. I should have also mentioned perhaps the Better Business Bureau. If you're interested in doing business with a company, you don't know much about it, you can go to the Better Business Bureau to see if they're rated or if there are any complaints against them. Okay. If you've done business on eBay, everybody has a rating. You can see how many transactions they've done. And if you see a, a business where they have lots and lots of positive ratings, okay, nearly a perfect rating, that's probably a good, a good business to do, uh, to do a transaction with. If you see someone who has a poor rating, you may want to stay away from doing business with them. Okay. For managers, Oftentimes, we provide um, incentives through compensation packages. Okay, stock options. Often, you may have heard of stock options. This is a case where the manager or the CEO and top-level managers receive the option of buying shares of the company stock at some specific price. If the price of the stock goes above that specific price known as the exercise price, they can cash in for a lot of money. So they have an incentive to increase the value of the firm. Whenever you hear about a, a CEO who made a hundred million dollars, he didn't make a hundred million in salary. He made a hundred million because he cashed in these stock options. Okay. Other companies require managers to purchase shares of stock in the company using their own money. Berkshire Hathaway, the company that Warren Buffett runs, Makes, his, uh, makes the people who work for him do this. Why? Because now they're shareholders. They have an incentive to increase the value of the firm. Other things that discipline managers, CEOs, possibility of corporate takeovers. Um, you may have heard of people like Carl Icahn or T. Boone Pickens. They're very well-known corporate raiders, and oftentimes when they feel that management isn't working in their best interest, they will lead a corporate takeover or they'll lead a proxy fight to try and uh, kick management out in order to unlock shareholder value. So the agency problem is a very real problem in finance and certainly in terms of managers working for shareholders, it's something that corporations Board of Directors of a corporation <clears throat> who represent 
shareholders have to work on in order to try and get managers to represent the best interest of shareholders.